Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Bahoda. I got a good one for you today. At least it's a good one for me, I hope, and I hope it's good for you. And that is, how do we view leadership within the church? Because I don't know about, about you, but for me, you know, leadership has always been, in a lot of circles anyway, something that, you know, has always been like above us. There's always been like this invisible hierarchy. And I'm going to show you today that that's not biblically accurate. Um, so I want to show you today what some churches will call the fivefold ministry. Now, some people might not like that term, and I get it. But it's coming out of Ephesians chapter 4, verse, starting at verse 11, where it says, And he gave some apostles, he gave some prophets, he gave some evangelists, he gave some pastors and teachers. Okay, so th those are the five. But we're going to talk about today the five of what? Right? And so if you hear that term, now some of you all again might not like that term, but for the sake of my audience who may not have ever heard that term, trust me, if you've ever, if you've ever grown up in Pentecostal charismatic circles like I have, trust me, you will hear that term thrown around a lot. It's called fivefold ministry. And it's coming out of Ephesians chapter 4. But I'm going to show you today, we really boogered that up as far as how we're supposed to translate this one particular verse in the King James Version, by the way. So sorry for all my King James Version only people here. But I'm going to show you in the King James Version, if you don't have a King James Version study Bible anyway, how the King James Version only translation will really get you wrapped around the axle and really booger some things up. So it's coming out of Romans eleven thirteen, because this translation here, or I should say this mistranslation into English, again, unless you have a King James Version study Bible that gives you what the translation is supposed to say, can give you the wrong mindset and really mess you up, okay? So let's get right into it. It's coming out of Romans eleven thirteen, and it reads, now I'm going to read it from the NIV to show you what it's supposed to say, Okay? It says, I am talking to you Gentiles, insomuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I take pride in my ministry. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. I take pride in my ministry. But let me read it in the King James Bible, and it's the ending to that is completely different. It says here, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. I magnify mine office. Saints, are you catching the severe difference of that? Now, I looked this up before I got on here today, and in my King James Study Bible, when it says mine office, there's a little footnote next to it. And if you go to the footnote on, in the notes, it'll say my ministry. So it should have said my ministry. And in the footnotes, it'll tell you that. The problem is, though, if you don't have a King James Study Bible, and if you just have a King James Bible without the footnotes, you won't know that. It'll just say, magnify mine office, and you'll think that's what it's supposed to say. It's not. It's supposed to say, my ministry. Now, that's a big difference. That's a very, very key note. For One, let this be a lesson to everybody. First of all, when you read the text, when you read the Bible, get more than one translation. Because the NIV says, my ministry. Um, uh, the ESV says, I magnify my ministry. The Berean Standard Bible says, I magnify my ministry. Um, the New King James Version says, I magnify my ministry. So all them say, my ministry. It's only the King James Version that says, mine office. Okay? Now, why is that significant? Because of, particularly here in the West, because of the presidency, you know, whatnot. You know, we say, you know, the office of the President of the United States. So when we hear the term, mine office... We think titles or positions that we hold instead of functionalities or functions or things that we do. Okay? You know, ladies and gentlemen, the president, you know, of the office of the United States. So not only is it a person, but it's also the position or title or office in which they hold. Right. You'll hear this a lot, too. When when somebody disrespects the president, they'll say, you know, you don't got to You know, you don't got to like the man, but you better respect the office. They're talking about the position in which they hold. OK. But we're going to see how in the church that doesn't hold water, because in the church, these are not positions you hold or, you know, people that have a title. 
but they're actually functions or functionalities that they serve within the body. Let me look up that mind ministry or mind office in the original Greek, and this is what it says. If you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it's, it's the word um, diokonia, which I hope I'm, I'm saying that right. If I'm not, please forgive me. I'm not a Greek scholar, so if I'm mispronouncing that, give me some grace. But it says here, service, ministering especially of those who execute the commands of others. So we, the word ministry there is ministering or serving. That's what he's talking about here, saints. It says, the ministration of those who render to others the offices of Christian affection, especially those who help meet the needs by either collecting or distributing of charities or love or distributing or serving or ministering or giving to people. It's talking about the way we minister or the way we serve other people here, saints. So when Paul says, I magnify my ministry or I magnify my office, which should be translated my ministry, he's saying, I magnify my ministering or I magnify my serving. I magnify my service. That's what Paul's saying. He's saying, I magnify my serving, not I magnify my office or position. Huge, huge difference. Now, saints, when we go back and read Ephesians 4 and 11 and following, we're going to see how that drastically changes the context because it's going to show you it's serving via equipping. Okay? So Ephesians um, 4, 11. So I'm going to get right into it. It says, For Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Now stop. You notice all those in the fivefold, if I can use that term, are in the plural. They're all in the plural, okay? That's why also, too, Paul says in Titus, appoint elders, plural, in every church. The elders were always in the plural. The fivefold ministry were always in the plural. There was never one senior pastor to rule them all. Like that movie, Lord of the Rings, you know, the one ring to rule all the other rings, the one ring to rule them all. Saints, that's not Bible, that's Lord of the Rings, okay? Or, you know, the Catholic Church used to say about the Pope in Rome versus all the other popes, you know, the first among many. That's a Catholic Church invention, okay? As they were part of the Eastern Orthodox Church at one time, too. That's a Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox thing. That's not a Bible thing, you know, the, the first among many and all that kind of stuff. You know, the senior pastor, the one pastor that rules all the other pastors. Saints, these are man-made functions and man-made traditions, these are not Bible. In the Bible, it was in the plural, okay? And there was no, like, you know, one man to rule everybody else and be over people. The Bible says very clear, and the Bible says, we are all now a peculiar people, a holy nation, a priesthood of all believers. So I don't need a, a, a priest to be over me, to be my liaison between me and God, Jesus is our high priest, he's our mediator, and he's the high priest making intercession for me every day. So therefore, because I have Jesus as my high priest, I don't need a priest over me. I now boldly can go before the throne of grace, realizing I don't need a man-made priest over me, because I have Jesus Christ himself over me, acting as my high priest, and he makes intercession for me. Therefore, I don't need that whole earthly, priestly system over me to be an intercessor between me and God. Okay? Therefore, praise God, there is no one man who's like above everybody else, all right? They're all in the plural. And they these are not positions or offices or, like I said, that we hold or even titles we have. These are functions of functionality in which we serve. That's why I find it very interesting when the Apostle Paul in his letters, when he introduces himself, he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. He never says, hi, everybody, I'm the Apostle Paul. He says, no, greetings, Paul, an Apostle of Jesus Christ. Greetings, everybody. Hey, I'm Paul, who functions or ministers or serves as an Apostle. Meaning, this is my service. This is my functionality. This is the way I minister or function within the body. But I'm Paul. I'm just some dude, just like everybody else. But I'm just some dude. But this is the way that I function within the body. Greetings, Paul, 
an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm Paul, and this is how I function. I am not the apostle Paul. That's how we introduce him. Because we think it's a title, and we think it's a position. And if, you, if, you, if you've been in uh, Pentecostal charismatic circles, not that I'm, you think I'm picking on Roman Catholics and Ethan Orthodox. No, no, no. In Pentecostal Protestant charismatic circles, we booger this up too. Because in, in our Pentecostal charismatic circles and in our in Protestant circles, we have this invisible hierarchy where we think these leaders are above us too. So even in our invisible hierarchies, we think that there's, that there's these positions and titles that we hold. And we're like, oh, pastor, you're so anointed. Oh, pastor, you're so this. Oh, pastor, you know, you're so that. Not realizing these are not positions that you hold and titles you have. They're functionalities in which you function. Now, this is a big deal because, again, getting back to that president of the United States thing, people say, well, you know, don't disrespect, you know, you may not like the man, but don't disrespect the office. Well, in the body of Christ, it doesn't work because pastor, even though he may have office in the, in the church building, pastoring is not his office. Pastoring is what he does. Shepherding is what he does. It's his functionality. So therefore, you, you, know, you know, you may not like the man. In this case, if you have a disagreement with your pastor, you may not like the pastor, but don't disrespect his office. There's no such thing as a pastoral office because it's not a position or office you hold. It's a function or service in which you serve. Therefore, that theology or that way, that mindset or that way of thinking doesn't hold water for the body of Christ. Now, I'm not saying that as a means to disrespect our leaders in the church, but what I am saying is they're not so untouchable the way you can't have questions. They're not allowed to lord it over you. They're not allowed to be narcissistic and control you. We're not doormats for our leader saints is my point. Okay, and if you have a pastor that's like that, you need to go. You need to leave and get out of there. Because that's going to be a very toxic culture church if you stay. But that's my point. That, that church should have never been that way in the first place. And that's why I'm teaching you this today. Because they're not positions or offices you hold. They're functions in which you serve. Amen? So, and they're, again, they're always in the plural. Now, starting at verse 12. Why? Again, talking about the serving to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So these fivefold, if you will, equip. They serve in such a way to equip the people of God for maturity in Christian service. They will no longer be infants, again, maturity grow up, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we, we will all grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. For him, the whole body joined and held together, including the fivefold, because they're part of the body too. They're not separate from the body. They're one of us, Okay. So we support held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So we all work in the fivefold works, but we all work together because we're all part of one body. So they're not separate from us like some, you know, like special forces, like secret hierarchy that, you know, they, you know, that they can't be a part of us. and We're just little peasant peons down here in the bottom. No, we all work together and they're part of us. Amen, somebody. They're not, they're not above us or lording over us. They are a part of us and we all work together functioning in our service and in our parts. That's it. I like the way my bishop in Hawaii says it. He's like, at the end of the day, guys, I'm just like y'all. I just have a different assignment. Amen. I'm not different. I don't lord it over y'all. I don't have to lord it over y'all because that's not what I'm called to do. I'm just like y'all. I just have a different function. That's it. This is how I function. But we all function within the same body. So we all are doing this in the same body together. That's what it's saying here. So these are not, you know, titles we have or positions we hold. These are servicing and functions in which we function within the body. 
What that would totally completely change the way we view leadership. Because it's kind of like you ever see the Lion King when you know the, the hyenas were saying Mufasa, say it again, Mufasa, ooh, say it again, Mufasa, ooh. And that's how we treat our pastors. You know, Pastor So and so, ooh, you know, I just get chills just thinking of my pastor. He's so anointed. They're not people to be elevated above us. Again, there is no secret hierarchy, saints, because we're all a priesthood of believers. Now, again, don't take this as, as a means to be disrespectful to, to our leaders, because we shouldn't be. We're all supposed to be walking in love and be respectful to those who are over us in, as far as spiritual, you know, authority and whatnot, you know, maturity and teaching and stuff. But at the same time, the people who are teaching and, and all that are, that are giving out the word to people, you're not above them. You're not better than them. You're not, you're, you're part of them and you serve them in your ministry of service. This is, in a lot of churches, revolutionary way of thinking. Because in a lot of churches, man, they are not trying to hear this. There is this bow down to me because I'm the bishop type of culture and mentality. And that's not of God. These are not, particularly if you're in a denominations where like they, they have all these titles like bishop or district superintendent and these are all positions that you hold within the hierarchy denomination. And that's not necessarily sinful per se, but they are man-made, made up. None of that's in the word. That, that's just things that people have made up to make their denomination function without the chaos. But it's, man, it's a man-made hierarchy structure, y'all. That's what it is. In the body of Christ, it was never supposed to be like that. Again, these are not offices we hold or positions we hold or even titles we have. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul, who functions or serves or ministers as an apostle. That's how Paul introduced himself. But what do we do? I'm bishop so-and-so. No, you're so-and-so who bishops. Which just means the word overseer. You, you're you're so-and-so who oversees. You're not bishop so-and-so. Whoa! See, this is revolutionary. This is revolutionary. See, a lot of lot, lot of leaders are not going to like me right now. A lot a lot of churches are not going to like me right now because I'm coming up against their denomination. I'm coming up against the way they do things. I'm coming up against their culture. I'm coming up against their denomination. I, I, I'm coming up against the way they think. I know. And there's a lot of churches that are not going to like me right now. But I'm telling you, no, you're so-and-so who bishops, i.e. you're so-and-so who oversees. Because you're an overseer. That's it. Now, you may be a pastor as well, but that just means your brother so-and-so who pastors. You serve in a certain function, which happens to be pastor. Whoa. Whoa. So, this is revolutionary in a lot of churches. Now, if you, some of you are asking me for book recommendations. If you want book recommendations on this, Pagan Christianity is a great one by Frank Viola because it talks about this hierarchical structure that we built in the body of Christ that really we got from the Roman Empire, which wasn't not of the, of the Bible. It was really brought to us by the Roman Empire. So when the early church got started, we instituted a lot of the Roman Empire hierarchy model and it really messed up the body of Christ. So Pagan Christianity by Frank Viola is a good one. Um, he also talks about that again in his other book, Reimagining Church by Frank Viola. He really comes up against that whole, you know, bow down to me, pastor thing. He, he highlights that even more in here, how we're all supposed to participate in the worship service. Now, we're supposed to have elders and leaders and whatnot, but we're all supposed to be participating when the body of Christ comes together. In a lot of churches, because the way that they, do, they model their Sunday morning service that doesn't happen. You basically have the praise and worship team and the pastor, and they're the only two people that speak. And we just sit there and watch what they do. That's not the way it's supposed to be in, in, the, in the biblical church. So reimagining church is another good one. Another one you want to get, he'll talk about this too. Same thing, Church Zero by Peyton Jones. Okay, He talks about that too, this whole thing about, you know, the office and how we have just completely made this thing about an office instead of functions that we serve. Church Zero by Peyton Jones is another good one. Another book by him, and I'm going to let you go, 
another Peyton Jones book, Reaching the, un the Unreached, Becoming Raiders of the Lost Art. Instead of Lost Ark, and you see the Indiana Jones hat. It's basically a book on evangelism. So it says here, Becoming Raiders of the Lost Art, basically talking the lost art of evangelism. And he's basically coming up against the mindset of having people come to church to get saved, if you will. He's like, no, the church needs to be going to the world. So we got this model backwards. The church is supposed to be going to them. We're waiting to them to come to us. So he's like, we need to get back to the Bible and start be going to all the world instead of waiting the world to come to our church services. So he's like, we got the model backwards. So Reaching the Unchurched, Becoming Raiders of the Lost Art by Peyton Jones. This is a really good book about biblical evangelism as opposed to how we do evangelism today in America. Really good book. So anyway, <clears throat> those four book recommendations will really help you get your uh, um, head wrapped around this. Okay, so get these books. That's a lot of reading right there. It, a lot to wrap your head around. But I've read all four of them. Really, really good books. Okay. So yeah, these are not positions we hold or titles we have, but these are functions or serving or ministering in which we serve. And it, we just read it to, to equip the saints for serving and for Christian service and for maturity within the body. That's what they're there for. And they're in the plural. They're always in the plural. Oh, that's so delicious. <laughs> so amen, somebody. If this has blessed you, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, well, first of all, I know I'm going to take somebody off. So... <laughs> May we all walk in love, too. Amen. But until next time, know that God loves you united, too. God bless everybody.